Just have a seat anywhere, Jimmy. Oh, Let me go grab some water. Right it's a little warmer in here than it is out there. It is. It feels better in here. Dude, I lost my cup somewhere. It's a generic cup. Hey, Joe, do you know Ted? Yeah, I think I've met him before. Yeah, sure. Out the office that day. Yeah? Yeah. I've met him too. All right. All right, Ted. All right. You don't want any water or anything? Uh -huh. All right, Jimmy. Um, these are your Garrity rights, okay? Mm -hmm. I can tell you're familiar with them, but if you want to read those over, and uh, this is good for you. I don't know if you have any questions about anything. Oh, that's so good. Is it? It's cold here too. There's no chill there. There's Four, four, four. You need twelve fifty eight. I appreciate you being here, Laura. Man, makes it a lot easier. Yeah, I kind of figured you guys were busier. It never ends. It does. It never ends. Never stops. First, let's just start off with, do you have any questions right off the top of your head that you want to ask? She gave me a paper yesterday that said something about um, public records, um, village property, mm -hmm. inaccurate reports. Mm -hmm. I forget what the other one was. Okay. Okay. Um, you know anything about that stuff, about the inaccurate reports of city council? Um, we'll get to those, I'll tell you. I'll try to go chronologically, that way it makes more sense to us and to you then. Um, but just tell me about what happened during the accidental shooting. Obviously I've gotten stories, a couple of different, you know, people told me, but, I, you know, you're, you're the guy that, that accidentally discharged a weapon, mm -hmm. so I can't wait to hear from you, man. We, Jeff and Megan and I were on our way back from, uh, Lancaster, we had eight um, B-dubs. We were coming down 79 and we were in the area of Buckeye Lake Estate, I mean Beezer Village. And my telephone rang, it was from Darlena Witt Hofer. I've known the family since, well I was a firefighter with uh, her brother Terry forever. And she's on the phone screaming and saying her, her aunt, she found her aunt in the middle of the road and that two guys had broken into her aunt's house and was holding, held her at gunpoint. She was able to escape, 
But the, one, the gunman shot the guy, one guy, he was laying in the floor bleeding to death, and the gunman was still in the, in the house. So we're right there between both entrances the, to Leesville. Village, the main entrance and the second entrance. I tell Jeff, go there, because it's right over here, M section. So I was going there, I called Steve Ritter. Literally, this is what we got to get down to M, the M section, meet with us. As we pull up, I'm down in the sheriff's office. I call the sheriff's office. Um, tell them exactly what's going on. They say, you want emergency traffic? Yes. So you call them? I call the sheriff's office. Okay. Um, we're standing there, we're just trying to decide what's going on, and she keeps saying, he's dying, he's in my house dying, he's in my house dying. She was very physically upset. Um, both of them were really upset. I had no belief, belief to doubt them. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't even thinking of being on technically light duty. Right. Had no gun with me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with there was someone possibly being in that house dying, you guys have done the same thing. You'd have went in. We had three people here, and we've been trained. I told Ritter, give me your handgun. We're making one around the side of the trailer to see if there was a door on the back. I said, go get your rifle because we don't know what he's got. Give me your handgun. It's the same identical handgun that I've got. And we went in, cover three. Vermaid was first one in the door, went to the right. Um, because it's a double wide. I mean a single wide. Went in and I went to the left and I held the whole back of the, the trailer. And the trailer is really dark. And the only lights that's on is their flashlights and a, a TV in the very back room. Um, I'm standing here, low ready, left hand. And all of a sudden something flashed. I thought someone was coming up and when I came up, I hit a corner and poof! Went in around, went in the floor. Okay. Did you have your finger on the trigger or something when you went yeah. up? I had, yeah. Yeah. Because, because well, because I was coming up to protect myself. Right. And I just hit that counter and it just pow. Okay. Off, just simple as that. We cleared the house, no one was there. It was a t the TV and the doors cracked about that big. Um We talk, I talked to the woman and the son. Didn't know that she had an onset of dementia is what he told us. Told us the other day that she told him Trump was in her bedroom. Never had never been to that house before. I know her, but I knew only knew her from McDonald's, not personally talking to her or anything. I didn't know that she was ha having an issue. Which after everything was found out, it was it was found out she had a UTI. Urinary tract infection for ever and never told her kids, and that was what was she had seen a police movie prior to going to bed that night. Hmm. Okay. So you know, I checked the house to make sure everything was fine, that we didn't hurt the electric, didn't hurt the water. You know, from her in, set her and her son down, and said, "Listen, we had an accidental discharge. Um, sorry about that. Everything in the house is fine." And his exact words to me is, I don't give a shit, as long as my mom's okay. I said, what about a doctor's, if she's hallucinating or something like that, we need to get her to take care of her. Let's get her to the hospital. He said, no, she goes into the doctor's in the morning. I said, then you can come and get a copy of our report so your doctor can have that to use to see what kind of medicine you get it on. And he, he said, that would be fine. Or I would have pink slipped her that night. But with her, he's like, I'm staying here. She's going to the doctor's in the morning. She argues a little bit with him. No, I'm not. Mom, yes, you are. You've got a doctor's appointment. And I, and I told him, I said, Dave, you come and get a copy of this report. Or have your doc, your, you know, get something from your doctor. We'll fax a copy of the report over to see, you know, show that she's hallucinating or something so she can get help. Okay. And we went back to the office. All three of us wrote up our statements. Wrote up the use of force where we accidentally, I had the accidental discharge and went from there. Did I you, called the mayor. Did you do a call record at that time or a state or a report at that time? Because when I went over to talk to you, you didn't have one yet. It was in the in the computer, yes. Okay. Jack from Mayton should have faxed it to you. We had a CR number. Right. Yes. CR number and the square CR number was, was filled out and everything. Okay. It hadn't been typed in yet, mm -hmm. but it was put in the book. 
and it was it was handwritten out. Okay, and you said you notified dispatch, right? Yes. Okay, did Ritter also notify dispatch, or did he uh, just come right to the scene with you guys and help clear the, the trailer? You know, I don't know if he also notified dispatch because we didn't have a walkie on him. On I didn't have a walkie either to Jeff. Mm -hmm. I do know when I was standing there and she said 99 traffic, he got on the radio and asked for, and said, but you know, 45899 traffic. Okay. All right. So we pull a tape from there. It's going to have you call on dispatch. Yes. Okay. Yes, it was. Because Ritter marked it. Uh, he marked dispatch too and said, "Hey, you know, what's going on over here at the trailer park or, and everything else." So he, he actually marked it. Um, so you guys get over there. You have your extra discharge. Talk to the people. Everything's fine with them. Now, at some point, Heber came over, right? Yes. Okay. Were they called to come over? I don't know. I don't know that because again, I didn't hear anything on the walking. I don't know. Sometimes when we got something like that, they just drift over. Right. And we drift over to them. Sure. It's kind of, you know. kind of good mutual aid. Yeah. yeah. Um, was there any conversation about not telling them about the actual district? Yes, there was. Okay. What was the, was that your call? Yes. Okay. And what was the rationale there? Ritter likes to tell things. And, I, and for the, the integrity of the case, integrity of the accidental shooting, Ritter, you don't have to go tell everybody that we had an accidental shooting. Let's get this investigated first. Let's go get it looked at. You know, let's save the integrity of the case right here before anybody, you know, 1,700 people know. Sure. And that was the only reason. But no reason to hide anything. How can you hide an accidental discharge? Makes it tough. I Things mean, go bang real loud. <laughs> yeah. And you got a spent shell. We, we got the shell. I mean, okay. yeah, I sure did. I, I told him. I mean, because he likes to tell. You know, and we, there's some things that happens in house just like here. You guys have things that happen in house. You guys aren't supposed to tell anybody until things are looked at. You know, I did exactly what I was supposed to do. I called the mayor. I called the mayor six times and she never called me back. She called Ritter instead of calling my phone. She does that a lot. Because she had the other day, she's standing there, Ritter's phone goes off. Call from Peggy Wells. He's talking to her. I, I'm like, I walk up and say, why aren't you calling me? Mm -hmm. I'm the chief. Mm -hmm. Right. That's true. Huh. You, know? so you guys got some communication barriers between you and the mayor, you would say? From, from years, she's been on council for years, and, and yeah, she never liked the police department. She's actually picketed against the police, the fire department. She don't like them. She had a big meeting with Randy Thorpe, and well, Billy was still there, mm -hmm. and wanted to see about bringing them in and get rid of us and Billy and them guys told him you, you can't afford us. Right. You know. Uh, and but when she took over mayor and she took me in on January nineteenth, I told her, I said, All I want to do is my job. Yeah. I want to work with you. I have no hard feelings about nothing. All and, right. Yeah, and that's that you know that's that. But the other thing that got brought up by Peggy uh, was some of the hours that were logged in, and then that was also a concern with some of the people we brought in, brought that up as well, some of the hours that you actually worked, and, uh, you know, not actually being at work. That was a common theme, everybody we talked to, that, right. you know, you weren't actually at work doing anything. Um, and a couple, I guess a couple of them mentioned a computer that you had at home, that your excuse was that you had to go home because you had some information on the computer at home that you didn't at work. My computer at home is set the same way the computer at the house. I mean at the office. Okay. And if I was at my house doing stuff and writing, you can go to my house right now and I can show you the stuff that I've done, um, changing policies and changing things. I've had permission from our mayor, Carol, Kate Carroll, uh -huh. to go there. Okay. Have you had permission from this mayor to go there? No, and I haven't. Okay. Um, if I wish I would have brought my foot, my phone in, the times that they're probably talking about is I burnt my foot, right heel, really bad, clear to the bone, mm. and I had to have a special um, boot, and it hurt to walk in it. And I would come in the mornings, I would get the mail like I was supposed to, I would check the phone recorders and do everything else, and then I would go to the house and do what I had to do. Come. You know, and but I always had my walk here right there, and they knew this. Mm -hmm. Well, I think part of it too was they, they said they came over, you know, a couple times, and you were just wearing shorts and a t shirt watching cops while you were on duty. Um, no. And that was the, 
you know, and then I, when I checked the um, the records, you, you you had them logged down as hours yeah. that day, you know. But my concern is if you're at home that day, you know, and that's true. Let's say that's true. What he's saying, you know, if you're just sitting around watching cops when you're supposed to be at work, that could be an issue. Right. Obviously, I mean, you're the chief of police. You wouldn't want one of your guys doing that, you know. So I mean, you got to understand from you know our perspective, looking at numbers and looking at everything else that that you know are brought to us to, as a concern. We have to try to figure out why or justify why that's happening. Right. So and that's, and that's why I'm asking you because no. I want you to justify to me why that is a is a reoccurring thing though from everybody we've talked to. It's a reoccurring issue that yeah, well, Jenny goes home a lot and you know he'll leave and he'll just stay home. But it's a, it's a, literally, it's a reoccurring thing. Everybody said the same thing. Why do you think that is, Jimmy? I, I do go home a lot, but I would not. I would be in blue jeans or, or my BDU pants and a shirt that always said police, and I would be doing the stuff that I was allowed to do on the computer for the mayor. And then I would go out and, and go get cards, tag numbers and stuff with the junk cards, mm -hmm. and I would do my Oleg, mm -hmm. and or, or write it up. I would, well, I wouldn't do the Oleg at the op, at the house because I couldn't. I could only do it at the office. But I would write the jump car stuff up. Okay. I mean, I just because if they come home and see me, I'm in a T-shirt that says police, and I'm not wearing my full uniform mm -hmm. with the badge and all this everything else, doesn't mean that I'm cheating the system sure. and not working. I'm doing a lot of things in the background that. Speaking of that, jump cars. I want to ask you about that too. What are your procedures for jumping cars? Junking cars? Yeah, let's well, say so you get a car in an impound, nobody comes and gets it. What is, you, what, are your, what is your procedures to get rid of that vehicle? Run the oh. thing through the state of Ohio, they come back and tell us if there's a lien on it, mm -hmm. and then you send that person, or if there's a lien on it, you send that person 10 day notice, uh -huh. or if there's no lien on it, you send that person, the owner, 10 day notice, and then if they don't collect it, or they we get it back, they've got 10 days to pay the towing or anything like that. If not, then I go get a title from the BMV, mm -hmm. and then we gather how many ever cars we got up, get three bids, and then people come out and look at the, you know, like junkyards or okay. private people or whatever. They look at all the cars all at once and give you three bids, and um, the highest bidder gets them. Okay. And they get them, they get them all intact, the way they're mm -hmm. supposed to be. Okay. Um, have you ever taken any batteries out and sold the batteries? No. No? And the reason I'm asking in this setting, Jimmy, is this is a setting where, under Gary, I, you can't be charged with what we're talking about. We can't right. talk about this criminally. Right. Okay, but there it's, if that comes out criminally, you know, there's going to be some issues probably with, with, with stealing, okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, there's been those allegations. and. A little more than just allegations, very, very specific things that I've checked out that are not making a lot of sense, okay? Um, one of them especially being a water pump that was taken off of a truck for a Randy. And Randy gave up the water pump to his brother, Gary. And Randy had your permission to take the water pump off of the truck that was in the impound lot. So think about that before you answer me, Jimmy, because I want you to be really honest with me, man. I'm good. I am. Uh, my goal here, dude, you, I, I, I respect you, and I really do genuinely like you. I want to make sure that you come out of this thing, you know, okay. Whether that's okay with your job, okay without your job, you know, but I, what I don't want to see is something that, you know, you get charged for or go to jail for. Right. You know what I'm saying? If anyone was taken off them cars... The village already owned them, and they had permission from the mayor to take anything. I personally have never taken anything off the cars, out of the cars, anything. Now, Randy and Mark Demick has, yes. But they've always had permission, and, we, and they've never done anything until the vehicles were owned by the village. Sure. And they were going to the junkyard. They were getting loaded up that day or the next day. And go into the junkyard to be crushed. Okay. So it's all the same pile of money, right? I mean, if one car goes, it goes whole, or it goes. Are they junking it out? Are they checking for all the equipment? Or are they making sure that if they can pull the engine or a water pump or anything off of that, that, that the junkyard will do that? Or are you sell them 
You just sell them out of the hole. Sell them at, at the car. I've seen that when I've taken them there, they ran the forks through the forklift, through the with the windows, picked it up, put it in this thing, put it down. Yeah. <clears throat> Crush everything like a sandwich. Yep. But if, if I didn't even know about a water pump to, to Gary. Um, but if it was taken, battery, water pump, um, I, I, I will tell you, I knew a jack was taken, um, one of them scissor jacks, mm -hmm. but it was already up on the trailer, trunk was, was locked, and Randy's like, oh, we got a jack. All right. Mm -hmm. and, but the village owned them vehicles, there was permission by Clay Carroll, and nothing was taken until it. That stuff was taken, was the village owned it. Okay, so when the village owned it, let's say that you guys did everything properly, the village owned it. Did you take any batteries then after they owned it? Did, did the mayor say, hey, you can take these? I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, ex explain it my, for myself in my head why I've had two people tell me the same thing now. Two different people. One, you know, that I would say is completely on your side. One that says, maybe not completely on your side. And they're both telling me the same thing. So I'm trying to... I'm trying to figure that out why in my head that would be the case. So is there a, is there a circumstance or an instance where you did take a, take a battery or two after um, the mayor cleared it? I've never taken a battery. Never? Never. Okay. Okay. Never. All right. Well, I, I needed to ask you about that because, like I said, if, I've had a couple of them here, all right? Um, so you don't know anything about Randy taking the water pump? No. Okay. Because Randy's saying he had your permission to do it. Not the mayor. So he had your permission. Well, he probably asked me, "Hey, I'm going to get something of one of these cars," mm -hmm. and it may have been, you know, it may have been a water pump, but I don't remember. But uh, but no one took anything until the village owned the vehicles and they were going to the scrapyard. Okay, I got it. All right. Um, Matter of fact, I got tape. Yeah, they, they took a set of tires off once for um, a vehicle. There was good tires that were going to the junkyard. We put it up on the thing, they lifted it up, and it took the tires off. Because it would have fit one of the village um, work vehicles. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. So, you know, it's things like, it was things like that. Jimmy, have you ever taken anything from the vehicles that the mayor said you could take? No. Uh, any of the vehicles that you were going to impound? No. Okay. All right. Um, going back to now the... Um, the accidental shooting, the accidental, I'm going to call it accidental discharge, it wasn't, I mean, you shot the ground, right, essentially. Um, you knew that you were not on duty, right? I knew I was on light duty. Okay, you weren't even on light duty according to your doctor's excuse. You were on light duty until the 12th. No, I had the doctor's excuse with me. I've got the doctor's excuse. Um, it doesn't say that you can return until the 12th. And this accident, uh, this incident happened on the 10th. But you were not to return to work until the 12th. Okay. The 12th was a Monday. Yes. All right. And this happened on a Saturday. Yes. I could have, uh, I could return to, to, to duty on Monday. Yes. On Monday. So that means you weren't on duty. You had, you weren't on duty at all, right? That's why you didn't have a gun with you. I would assume you had your police ID probably, but mm -hmm. you didn't have your firearm, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's because you were not on duty, correct? No, I don't, I don't feel that way. I feel that I'm in the village, I'm on duty. Even though the doctor's saying you're not allowed to be on duty until the 12th. Yeah, the doc, well, the doctor said you return to duty. That's a return to work. Right. Okay. I was physically working to get paid. I'm, well, I got paid through sick time, but physically showing up and doing the work. But I was, I considered myself on duty because I'm in the village. I live in the village. Um, I'm the chief of police, so I'm 24-7. So, yeah, I considered myself on duty. Okay, so if one of your officers acted the same way you did, in the same manner, you wouldn't have a problem with that then at all. If they were not due to come back to work for two more days and they took a call in the village, they took a call, even though they're not cleared to come back for two more days, would you per se, do you have a problem with that? If it was the same situation that I was put in? Sure, call it exactly the same. No, I would not. Okay. And why is that? Because there was intimate risk of death. He was there. He had plenty enough people to take care of what the situation was. 
and I believe he has the what word do I want to use? You want to use probably duty to do something, right? Yeah. And, and I assume that's where you're going with Yeah. That. Okay. Yes, I do. I do. I, I would not have a problem with that at all. I mean, the accidental discharge was very unfortunate and in a bad timing, but you know, no, I wouldn't have a problem with that at all because because of the intimate danger, and it was just the way she was saying it. You know, just like he's dying, he's dying. Please help, please help, please help. Okay. Um, who's responsible for your auxiliary hours? Jeff or Mayton. Okay. And who's responsible for the, are you his boss? Yes. Okay, so are you also responsible for the hours that go to the city council? You're testing, you're turning those into city council, right, as a document. As the end of the month report, you mean? Yeah, the end of the month report, where you've got all the hours listed for everybody that worked, uh, all the calls that were taken, all that stuff. Yeah, we get the calls and everything out of the computer system. Okay. And Jeff would estimate the hours. How's he estimating the hours? I'm confused on that part. Um, I work 80 hours a week. Uh -huh. I mean, 80 hours a week. Every wow. two weeks. Every two weeks. That's 160 a month, so he'd put 160. He would take what he was supposed to work, mm -hmm. um, divide that by two. That's what he would get, just down the line like that. Okay. That's for the, the full-timers, right? For the paid, yes. For the paid people. Mm -hmm. And Jeff Ramadan was in charge of all the paid, pe the paid people to make sure that all of their uh, numbers were accurate? Well, we t we've turned in them on the... In, uh, the uh, Payment slip. Right, but who was ultimately responsible for that to make sure those numbers are correct? Those numbers were estimations. They were never correct, not, not meant to be correct. There's, you guys are paid by the hour, right? Mm hmm. How do you get paid by the hour, an estimate by the hour? How does that work? Because we have a time clock. We got to turn stuff. I mean, we literally have a time clock. See, so we don't. Right, which is crazy, but it keeps track of our hours very we well. Used to, we used to have a time clock, and I don't, for some reason, I don't know where, why it went out. But if you don't work, if, if, if I estimate you worked 20 hours, but you only worked 15 hours, am I not cheating a village out of five hours? Or your police department, with your limited budget, are you cheating yourselves out of hours if you do it that way? No, because our hours were, it was not estimated, the hours worked was by our time sheets. Okay. And then it was verified with Mary over here. Okay, how would Mary know how much she worked? Oh, she, she would see us. I mean, it, you would write your hours down. Right. I mean, you know, like if you go out there to, right now, I'll sit here with you. You'll see 6 a.m. on my time sheet, but you won't have a time ending. Okay. Because when I would, before I leave and go home, I would write, okay, let's say I, I'm up 4 today. I write 4 p.m. The amount of hours, and you can worry any but the, the hours. Yes. So. Uh, do you have like a? You don't do any kind of trip sheets or anything, then, right? Should the chief? We mean trip sheets. Like a log trip log, like uh, no. your officers do when they're out no. when they're out riding around, driving no. around and stuff. Um, which makes sense. You're the chief of police, so you're just putting in your time, your hours, and that's it. Yeah. All right. Um, so, who is ultimately responsible for making sure those hours are correct? Are you talking on the, the, the sheet that... I'm talking about the sheets that you guys turn in to Mary. Who is responsible for those numbers that go over there? Ultimately, me. Okay. But I didn't do their time sheets. They do, each officer does their own time sheet. Sure. Like if you, you two work for me, you, you do your time sheet, you do your time sheet, and then on Monday mornings when I come into work when it was supposed to be turned in, I'd look. Right. All right. I know your day's off. Right. And I'm going to know if you're... Um, you had to work over or something. Mm -hmm. I'm going to know that, and I just verify through there, and I sign it. So you know when somebody has to work over or comes in for somebody else, they notify you, so you know about it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then you're ultimately responsible for making sure the numbers are accurate when they go to Mary, who I, I assume Mary does some other report as well, or did well, at the time. I have no clue. We just have to turn in our time sheets to okay. her. But you make a report for city council, or for village council. I'm sorry, if I keep calling city council, yeah. I'm just used to this. You make a report for village council, right? At the end of the month, they would get a report yes. on with the fire department and every street department and everything else. Right. And that report is done by who? Vermeiden. Okay, so Vermeiden does the report. He does the report up 
And I would assume, since you're the guy in charge, ultimately, and you're the one responsible for numbers, ultimately, you look at that report. No. You don't look at the report that remains doing? No. He, t he, he would come in or on, like on a Friday, when I'm off on Fridays, uh -huh. and he knows Monday is the uh, council meeting. He would do it up, mm -hmm. and then he would take it over and give it to Valerie. There's plenty of times I would never see that report. Okay. So, so nobody looks at what Vermeer's doing? As far as um, numbers go? Um, something reports? like that, no. Okay. Because they, they were just estimated numbers of, you know, he could put me down for 160 hours a month. I'm talking about, okay, I see where you're going with that. I'm sorry, Jimmy. Um, let's go back, let's say the auxiliaries. Who keeps track of their numbers then? I got where paid guys are. Vermeer's yeah. in charge of the paid guys. I got Vermeer. So Vermeer's also in charge of the auxiliaries. Yes. Okay. So when those numbers go over, do you check their numbers too to make sure that they're accurate? Because you said, like you said, you know who's coming and going in your police department. Well, it, you know, he'd put the hours down for them. They were, you know, some of them worked 16 hours a, a week, a month. Uh -huh. Some of them worked more. And some of them worked less. In fact, a lot of them worked less. I have no clue. But you know who comes, but you know who's coming and going, Jimmy. That's the whole thing I'm trying to. I, I want to get at. You know who's coming and going in the department, and there are people like Schilling. Is it Schilling? Schiller? Mm -hmm. I know Jason you. Schilling. Jason Schilling. Yeah. I talked to lots of people, and they said he only comes during taser training. That's it, and he's he's listed for 16 hours a month. Correct. Every single month. Correct. Because Frank Foster, our mayor, uh -huh. said he did our radar, he did our taser. And he did some, what else did he do? Radar, taser, I want to say self-defense. The mayor said he could, he, he saved us so much money mm -hmm. without having to farm out that training that he would give you the 16 hours every month. Gotcha. That so was Foster. So your old mayor. Frank Foster. Two mayor, is that two mayors ago? Mm -hmm. So your mayor two mayors ago said that, that was okay. Yes. So you guys continue to put 16 hours on his month, the monthly report that's turned into village council. Yes. Even though he was not work, he was not working 16 hours. He wasn't physically working 16 hours. That's right. And, and, but he would come out every once in a while. I agree. I, 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 no, 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 they said that too. They said he could come out every now and then. Mm -hmm. um, but he wasn't coming out 16 hours a month, was he? No. 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 So when you take a report and it's being generated by the police department and it's going over to village council as him having 16 hours a month, that's not accurate. It may not be 16 hours, you may... I believe it is accurate because the mayor, Frank Foster, said giving this, we will trade him this 16 hours a month if he continues to train us like right. that. And that's the way we did it. I understand what you're saying. I, I do. I get it. But, you know, a guy like that's invaluable. You know, but you want that guy to actually work. And when you're presenting those numbers to, to the village council, the numbers don't match what is actually going on. Um, you know, so if you're putting 16 hours down, it looks like that guy's been there for 16 hours that month. He put in at least 16 hours of time, right? If you wanted to look at it that way, yes. I don't know. I mean, I really don't know how else to look at it, Jimmy, when it comes to that. Because, again, yeah, valuable guy. You want to keep him around. You want to keep him happy. But... He's not really, he's not putting the numbers in that you are saying he's putting in. Does that make sense? Is that I see side? the number side of things. Okay, okay I see your number yes. side of things. But also on this side of, of, of the tracks, the mayor said, do this because he trains us like this. You know, one month we'd have our taser, and then it would be like a month and a half, two months, we'd, we'd have to do our radar, and then the other one. So I see where you're saying number-wise 16, mm -hmm. but I'm doing what the mayor said to do. Okay, so let's say the mayor didn't say to do that. Huh? Let's, let's say the mayor did not tell you to do that. Mm -hmm. All right, let's say you, that's, that doesn't have anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. Is that still an accurate number if the mayor doesn't say that you can do it? If you put 16 on there, does he work 16 hours a month? I wouldn't do it. I know, but is that accurate? Is that accurate that he works? Let me just say it this way. Is it accurate that he works? He comes out to Buckeye Lake and physically works 16 hours a month. No. Okay. That's what I wanted to get at. Okay. Now, Vicki Glover, when's the last time she worked for you guys? Oh, I don't know. It's been a while. Been two years. Over two years. Mm hmm Would it be accurate that she worked in October of 2017? No. 
No. But you got 16 hours for that what that month, too, on the report that you guys turned in to Village Council. How's that? Because she's not on the department. Exactly. She's not. She's not on the ah, department. No one took her off, off the sheet. No one took her off the sheet, but somebody filled out that she worked for 16 hours. Yeah, just 16 every month. And you don't have, you don't have a problem with that? As, well, as a chief of police? I, that I do. Oh, yes. I, would, I would certainly have a problem with that. That I do. Not only yes. that, we've got Bartow. He works a lot, I understand. Um, but not all the time. Um, well, what's the other name here? Um, Bear. Bear. Tedra? Tedra. Tedra does not work 16 hours a month. But it's on there for 16 hours a month. Every month that she's been there, She's got 16 hours a month. I call her. She says, no, that's not accurate. I call the guy she rides with, Haas. <coughs> Jeff Haas. Jeff Haas. Jeff says, no, she does not work 16 hours a month. Yeah, right. you guys put 16 hours a month on that sheet. Uh, again. You understand? That's a criminal charge. That could be a criminal charge to do all that stuff. There's no monetary value. There's no monetary value. You're making a public, you're making a public record. You're falsifying a public document because that's it's going over to village council. You see what I'm saying? So you're falsifying a document that goes over there. And I don't know why. I don't get it. I really don't understand it. You know, but I mean, this is a place to explain it, Jimmy, if you're going yes. to. I mean, this is this is where it gets explained. Well, sure, I know this is where it gets explained. Jeff did them, and probably I should have critiqued them. But, you know, that's my bad. I'm sorry about that. But, but Jeff did them. So who's ultimately responsible for those hours? You are. That's what we just said, right? right. You're responsible for them. Okay? And if, if it's something that, you know, you, you screwed up with and you should have more oversight, then just say that, like you just did. I, you know yeah, what I mean? You're right. I probably should have, but, you know, you delegate someone something to someone and you have faith in that person. And evidently, I shouldn't have had faith in that person. Well, here's the thing. I delegate things to him all the time, constantly, because I'm, super, I'm a supervisor. But what I also do on the back end is I go and check to make sure they're done. Right. Not that I don't trust them, but you know, being a supervisor, you have to make sure. And that's why, and that's what I should have done. And, and and let's, the biggest thing is, and especially in our job, is accountability. We right. all have to be accountable. Ultimately, whatever I screw up, and he's my supervisor. Yeah, right. It goes on him. He actually screws up if I screw up. You know, and you're you're the department head, right? I mm -hmm. mean, everything under you falls on your shoulders, correct? Yeah, and, and you know. When I would delegate things to Andy, and Andy would do it, and it'd be done right. And I probably, and, and I shouldn't even use the word probably. I expected the same thing out of Jeff for Maiden. Sure. And you know, and I thought, well, you know, I've known Jeff for a long time. He's not a screw up. He's doing what he's supposed to do. And you're right. I should have said, let me have that report. Because I honestly never see the report. He would either do it on Friday. Or he would come in on Monday when I was working, mm -hmm. and he would ship it right off to Valerie, and Valerie would print it and give it to the other people, mm -hmm. give it to the, to the council. Okay. But it, you're right, I should have had more, <clears throat> should have been doing this right, you know. But I had, you know, Andy did a hell of a job for me, and I didn't have any problems, and I got into that blind side, you want to say. So when you guys are computing auxiliary hours, you don't, there's no system there, right? There was a system, and Ron, I think Ron did away with it. They had a time, they had a, How long have you been chief, though? Four years. So in four years, I, you got no system in place to track those hours, right? Right. Okay. And, and we have, in the last probably three months, or, or long, or yeah. not as long, there is an auxiliary that says reserve hours now on this big book. They come in and write, write their time. They're supposed to. Supposed to. But nobody does it, according to everybody I talk to. Yeah, no. I mean, if one of the guys, auxiliaries, comes out and slides out and rides with whoever at night, and if they don't, I don't hear them on the radio, or they don't stop by my house, I don't know they worked. Right. Okay. Um, let's go to these uh, checks that were cashed for the insurance company. Now, I talked to the insurance company about those checks, and uh, they had some pretty big issues with them. Mm -hmm. All right? That may be something that I'm, I'm going to have to turn over to somebody else to, to investigate criminally 
if it gets to that point, I may have to do that. Well, I don't checks. know what their, the insurance checks that when you were transported to the hospital and you were supposed to pay, you were supposed to cash them and you cashed four of them. Oh Lord, you gotta be kidding me. See Jimmy, the problem with the problem with an internal investigation is once it starts rolling, it starts opening the door to all kinds of other stuff that comes in. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I have a duty now to at least address it and try to figure out what's going on. In, in this setting, again, you're under Gary. Okay, I can't use anything you say criminally. Period. Okay. Oh, I understand. So, all right, I want you to understand that, you know, before you. Before it, you this is it. funny. These checks, I honestly, wholeheartedly, with my life, believe they were my Aflac checks, because I talked to John Curtis. You can call him and ask him. I got him in my phone. He says you've got a check coming, and you're going to have checks coming for your. Um, follow-up visits. I just got a check and you can run out to my truck or give me the keys. I got $3,100 out there. I just got an Aflac check mm -hmm. for this. Okay. I honestly wholeheartedly, one million percent, believe them checks were mine. This is starting to piss me off. When I found out they weren't, I made arrangements and they were taking money out of my payroll every month. I didn't fight the system because I honestly, guys, I honestly believed there were my checks. So did you get any Aflac checks during that time that you were getting those checks? Yes. Okay, so what you, did you wonder like, hey, wait a minute, why is Aflac sending me another check? No, because he told me that I had money coming from follow-ups. Gotcha. Just like a few minutes ago, I go to the hospital. I've been to the hospital since February 4th every day for three hours. I turned in everything. He just told me, he said, Get everything else you need because you've got follow-up money coming from your Affleck accidental insurance. Okay. That's what I thought those checks were. Have you been able to recognize those checks now when they come so that you don't cash them? Is there yes. a, something that you can say, hey, I, yes. I can't cash these checks anymore? Matter of fact, I got another check and I said, who does this belong to? I took it to the, to the village. They said it was me. So I cashed that check. That, guys, was 1,000 fucking million percent a mistake on my part, but it was not out to steal anything from anybody. I've never stole anything from anybody, and I never would and never will. Okay. That check, it, that check stuff, and I even, we even talked to this, the lady with Mayor Carroll, and we got it all upset out them taking money out of my my uh, checking account every month. I called the lady. This is my bank number. This is my routing number. They're taking money out. Evidently, they're paid off because they don't take out anymore. Okay. So you guys have made arrangements to get it taken care of. Yeah, there was arrangements taken care of. Okay. Perfect. Every month that money came out. Is it still coming out, or you got to pay? No, it it's got to be paid off because they haven't been taking their money out. Okay. All right. Um. Guys, that that upsets me. But you got to understand it. It's I, I, like not you guys. I understand. And, I, and, 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 you know, Jimmy, I don't want this to be an adversarial thing, man. Yeah. You know, I want this to be just all out there. And, again, out of respect for you yeah. and, and the job you've done for so long, I want to give you opportunities here, and that's it. I, I, I don't, don't want to force your hand on anything. No. I don't want to give you advice. All I want to do is try to find out everything about I, it. Like, guys, I don't have nothing to hide. Um, there was somebody mentioned um, a suicide scene where $140 came up missing, too. And they said that you had access to the money and that you mentioned that the dead guy wasn't going to miss the money. Do you recall anything about that? No. Okay. Oh, no. Nothing at all? Nothing at all. Okay. You guys get a lot of suicides out there? Not a whole lot. Yeah, some of 17. Do you remember how about how many? Last year, you know the last suicide I, I was on was with Andy, and a guy had shot himself in a in a bed, in a bunk bed. Yep, that's the incident I'm talking about. Yeah. So if you recall that, do you recall some money being exchanged or uh, being taken from the scene? Andy took everything because I couldn't couldn't stand the smell. Uh huh. And I do believe his family came and got everything. Okay. The deceased family did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
Um, log sheets. Who's who's responsible for keeping the guys' log sheets? The guys and gals that work work out there, their road log sheets. They write it out during the night and put it in the box. There are three months from last year completely missing. Road, road logs, or are you talking about both road logs and and actually city council the reports that you guys send to city council? Those are well, also missing. Now I know Peggy said something about them. They're, they're all missing. The whole the whole month, like three months worth. You know, I think it was April and uh, July. It was April, April, July, and, and November. Yeah. And yeah, that's yeah, correct. Because I was looking for them yesterday for. Her. Okay. Yeah. Any idea what happened to those? Not. A, I talked to Jeff or Mayton. Because he gathers them up, puts them in a big envelope, he does the, the monthly report, copies it, shoves it in, in, in you know, with the road logs, flips it over and writes road logs and stats in the month and the year, and then he takes the other report over to Valerie. I ask him what he done with them, he has no clue what he done with them. Well, why are you allowing them to leave the office in the, in the first place? I know that everybody's mentioned everybody's got stuff at home. Why has anybody got anything at home? Why does Jeff or Mayton have any, any paperwork at home? Any yep. files or anything else like the that? The only thing he would have at home would be his um, qualifications for us. And there were his copies. And the, when uh, Peggy was asking me about the qualifications, I didn't know Jeff already had already, already put them all together. And they were in the cabinet right by his desk. Gotcha. So there was... And let me, let me ask you this, Jimmy. And again, this has got to stay here with this stuff. Did you guys ever kind of cheat your way through the qualifications? Because I looked at your qualifications, and you know, if you've shot, 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 you've only missed one round, you know, throughout three different guns and a couple of different years, and then you went to try to qualify this time and couldn't hit anything. Something jumps out right there, just for me as being an investigator. And then when I talked to everybody, they said they've never, they don't, they don't watch you qualify. No one's seen you qualify besides for me. I qualify before everybody because I was told that I have to watch them okay. in case I have to testify in court. Yes, they did do well, and Vermeer was their trainer. Now, what, were those 100% accurate? The, the scores that Vermeer gave you? Yes. Okay. Jeff Vermeer will not pass you if you didn't. Okay. He'll make you. Matter of fact, I'll give you a scenario with Andy Davis. Andy wanted Jeff to say, "Hey." I did my hours when, when Andy got in trouble in Muskingum County. Mm -hmm. He got work. He had to work at the dive team. Andy said, "Just tell him that I was here and worked." Jeff said, "Absolutely not. Okay. I am not doing that." Then why does Jeff want and other people claim hours that never happened? I think it's just muscle memory. Not muscle memory. I just think Jeff thinks that you know it's 16 hours. Um, he wouldn't know if someone came out and worked. Um, like during the during the day when he's off, mm -hmm. or during the night weekend when he's off, I think he just thinks it's the honor system, and I'm I'm going to give you 16 hours, gotcha. and he's not 100% sure if they did or not. I don't think it was to deceive anybody. It's not to Jimmy. Would you say that everybody got 16 hours in just based on what you know? The guys that I have now. I'm talking about, let's, let's think of all the 17. Let's just take 17 and to, to right now. Do you think that everybody really right got now. their 16 hours in? If they didn't get their 16, they got close to it. Okay. But, Fair, you, know. but you, you would say that's an accurate statement then, that not everyone got their 16 hours in? I would say it's accurate. They were close, but gotcha. may not have got to 16. Okay. Some of them may have got more than 16, right. and you know, they only got right now. But that's 16. fair to say, though, right? That yeah. They didn't get 16 all the time. And it's also fair to say that you're in charge of that. Ultimately, it's your department, your responsibility to make sure those numbers are accurate. Their, their numbers were never, ever in the whole world ever meant to be accurate. That was just a summary of what we've done. Okay. The only thing accurate in that, that whole thing was the very front page. That was accurate. And it wasn't accurate because you guys miss Ritter's numbers on almost every month. What do you mean? Like Ritter's numbers that he had. Your call volume is actually way bigger than you, you guys claim it is. You guys have more calls and did more things than you guys claim because right. you didn't factor Ritter's numbers in. All of Ritter's call records, all his calls, all his stats. Even his hours. Even his hours worked. <clears throat> nobody calculated them. So, Ritter's not putting his stuff in the computer. That, and that would be the problem there with okay. call volume. What do you mean putting stuff in the computer? He's not typing his, his, his stuff in the, his CRs and call records okay. in. Okay. 
So and I would you guys that. go off the you guys go off of that for the call logs. So you take the call logs, you put them in the computer, and then Vermaden gets those numbers off of the computer to yeah, put Yeah, he on gets the in there and gets, you know, I got you. and it's generated from the computer. So if that call number is low and it's Ritter, Ritter's not putting his his stuff in. Ritter's name's not even on the on what? Uh, Ritter's name's not even on the list of anything that's been done. Go grab one of those packets for me. Yeah. Um we can grab it. Ritter's name is not actually even on the list of auxiliary officers or part-time officers or full-time officers. His name's not even on a lot of it. So, Steve's is it? No, so we wrote it in and put down the stats that he got, and your numbers actually rose. Instead of being down here, they actually rose a lot. So you guys, you guys aren't getting credit for a lot of stuff you're doing because his numbers aren't being calculated in that. So, you know, I don't think your village council is getting an accurate number really of anything. They're not getting an accurate number of how many people are coming out to work, their hours, or their call volume. Steve Ritter's name's not on that report. Yeah, and I'll show you when he brings it back over here. It's not, it's not even on there. Yeah, when you open it up, you've got all his call logs. So you know his call logs are on there. All his hours are on the call logs that he did, and everybody he picked up is on there. Now, what I did, too, is I went back and looked at all the call logs, and there, there are guys that, and, and gals that have zero call logs. None. But yet they got 16 hours listed. And they're not on one call log. Are they on auxiliary? One, they're auxiliaries. They're not on any call logs. They're not on anybody else's call log either. They didn't pick up anybody. They didn't uh, take anybody back. They didn't do a slash mark and then put their name on it. Nothing. They usually put their name on it. Like if, let's say Tedder rode with, with Hawes. Uh -huh. He would put his name on it and he should put Bear's name on there. Yep. Tedder. Some of them do. Most of them don't. Ritter's were pretty good about putting another name on there if you have somebody right with them, and right. so is a Haas. Yeah. But a lot of people don't. I mean, well, they don't at all. So when I, when, I, when I look at it, and you think about it from a village council point of view, if I'm looking at something like that and I want to see who's out, I see that this guy has 16 hours listed this month. So I go back through all the, the records, and there's not one mention of them there. There's not one log. There's not any number. There's not, there's not anything filled out that says he was there at all. So how do I verify that? Well... If Ritter and Haas is the, the, doing, doing that, their only other person would be Vermaiden because no one comes out and works with me because they all work day shift. Mm -hmm. So, I can't, I can't tell you. Yeah. I mean, but do you see a problem with the, the way things are? I, I see things need to be changed sure. majorly. Yeah. And I don't have a problem changing that stuff majorly. It's right, James. But I had no clue that Steve Ritter is not on that list. Well, for instance, see January here? We actually wrote in Ritter and Jackson because Jackson actually wrote with Ritter, I think, that uh, one day that month. So we wrote his stats in there, his, or his hours in there anyway. You know, and then Andy Davis picked up uh, Bartow, and Bartow got seven hours that day. Yeah. But Bartow didn't get 16 hours in that month. Now, there's times here that Bartow is our bailiff. Okay. And he would do the beta. There would be no call log for him. Is there any record of that? Sure. Does he, he sign in or something? Or do no, no. Okay. That's no, what I'm saying. Is there no. anything that's written down for No. That? He comes in and he would be the bailiff. All right. Um, see, Vicki Glover's still on. When is this one? 17. That's January 17. She was yeah. probably been gone on yeah. half a year at least. See, this should have been updated. He goes in the computer and gets this every month because he has to change that from month to month, mm -hmm. January, February, mm -hmm. and then New Year would come in and put the eight. Well, you see your total calls for service is 93. Mm -hmm. That's not counting uh, Ritter's. See? So now, this number, if that number is off, mm -hmm. then Steve Ritter's not putting his, his CRs in our computer system because this is generated from our computer system. Gotcha. So if that number's off, then Steve's not doing what he's supposed to do and he's hiding his CR somewhere. Gotcha. Because I'm not finding it because I'll see him in the book. Yeah. But I don't go in and check every one of them in the computer. Okay. I got you. But you're right. Ritter's name ain't on this. Right. It's not on a lot of them. You know, so the reports are just that. generated like that and then they're turned to city or the village council like that. So, and there's, you know. You know what? I never even thought to even think of that. Yeah. There's a lot of that. A lot of it. Um, wow. Were there any times, Jimmy, that you claimed some hours that you didn't actually work? No. There's hours that I work that I don't put down on my timesheet. 
So you work an extra hours and not clean? Yes. It. This my phone would ring constantly, and I'd have to go out. I'd have to go out. I never put the hours, all the hours down, because right. I know we're short of money, and I didn't want to work myself out of a job. You can ask any mayor that. Yeah. Um, what's the most people you guys have had out at one time? Two. Two? Yeah. Three? At, at any time, any given day. Usually two. Okay. I would work six. I would work six to four. Uh huh. And then someone would come in at noon to ten. Okay. And they would come out at noon to give me that four hours to go in the office and see what I stuff that I had to do. Okay. All right. So, um, is there any time that you would have three or four people working at once? No. No. Never. It'd be nice. <laughs> right. It would be. So on April twenty fifth, two thousand seventeen, you have four people listed as working at the same time. Who? You got Davis, Bermaden, you, and uh, Ritter. Ritter. Now, also on that day, and I've been told by two people, you and Vermaden went four-wheeling that day over in Perry State Park, Perry State Forest, which we've called Perry State Forest. We've also called dispatch and got the, the call runs and everything else and who marked in, who marked out, and all that stuff. You guys aren't anywhere on there. You and Vermaden are nowhere on there. On the call logs, all right. the CR, nothing, zero. What's it, what day was it? April 25th, 2017. It was on a Tuesday. Ritter actually got called into work to cover for either you or her mate in one of the two. He was not on his regular scheduled days. Yeah, okay. Do you remember that day? Do you remember going forward with him with her mate? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was on that. We've been forward on several places. Sure. That was on a Tuesday. And do you remember going to Perry State uh, Forest? We've been there several times. Do you remember going to Muskingum first? And then they not have that not open, then you went over to there? Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's the day, right? Yeah. Okay, that's the day that you went on Tuesday, the 25th, I think it was. Okay, then Ritter worked for Vermaiden and I took the day off. Okay, so you do remember that day then? Yeah. Okay, so you took a day off. What about Vermaiden? Uh, probably you sick time like I did. Okay, so you sick time that day? I'm supposed to, yeah. So you used sick time that day on the 25th to go out four wheels. So you weren't sick. No. I I just, were just using well, I shouldn't say sick time is PTO time. Okay. What is your PTO time? Explain that to personal me. Personal time off. Okay. What do you have to do to have personal time off? You just get that? Yeah. We, we, our so pay like stubs don't time. say um, sick time. It says PTO and then we get vacation. And I you get you. You cure so much. and I mean, if you wanted a day off, you just... Say, hey, I'm going to take this day off. And just like that day, right. Vermaiden had to have said, hey, this, do you want to go there? And I'm like, yeah, get someone to work for me. Gotcha. Okay, call Ritter in. Okay, and that's what happened that day then? Had to be. Okay. So he called, who called Ritter in? You or him? I think, you know what, I can't tell you that. I don't remember. Okay. But you know Ritter was called in to cover somebody's shift. Yeah. Okay. On a Tuesday, it'd be Jeff Vermaiden by himself. Right. So Vermaiden would have had to take a day, a personal day off, and you would have to take a personal day off at that point too. Yeah. Okay. So when you take a personal day off, how do you how do you notate that you took a personal day off when you guys turn in your timesheets? Should be put sit down there and then the amount of hours you took. Okay. How many hours is now refresh my memory here. Did you take sick time or did you take a personal Right. Day? It's PTO time. Okay. It's, that's considered the same thing as sick time yes. for you guys? So you don't actually have sick time, you have to take PTO time? Right. And you have to accrue that time, or how's that yeah, work? It accrues. Okay. All right, so you would have to just say PTO time across the time sheet or something or, like that. Yeah, or sick PTO, city. whatever you put on there. Yes. And that would be for how many hours? Well, we both work 10 hour shifts, it would be 10 hours. Okay, all right. Since we took the whole day off. Gotcha. All right. But you do recall calling them in for that particular day, and you guys going forward with that particular day. Yes, because we went to the one place and they were closed. And yes. that was, was that Muskingum? Was I right about that? Or no, it was some other. Was Zanesville? So, was it somewhere in, I thought it was Muskingum somewhere. Or, that's the information I had. And then they were closed. And then you guys went to Perry. We went to Perry, different part of Perry, and they hadn't opened up. It was, it was the next day yeah, they opened up. Gotcha. But the one trail that we did go to was already open. I gotcha. Okay. And then you had to go to, let me see. That trail. So that was on make sure I got my paper right here. 
That was on the 25th, right? That's your timesheet, right? Twelve hours, six eighty six p. Yeah, you see the problem I'm having with that? Yeah. That should have, that should have been. I didn't even finish this week. Right. That's because somebody grabbed it and made a copy of it because they knew you were out four wheeling when you were supposed to be at work. That's why that's there. Yeah. And because they were concerned that you were taking time off and doing things and claiming time for work. Yeah. Well, and that's why there's a copy of that. You probably did actually finish that timesheet, but that's a copy of the of the timesheet up until that point. I think we do have the finished one. And we do have the finished one. And so, it is. Yeah. So that's that's your handwriting. Probably that's, your that's my handwriting, yeah. You claimed twelve hours that day yeah. when you weren't there. Well, I can tell you this. If you go out there and look right now, Steve's isn't done for this week. Yeah. And you know what? I just whipped it out and didn't even think about taking that day off. That wasn't taking that day off on and trying to rip someone off. You know, um, I just should have do it like I do it now, which is fill it out as I go. But, but that day here, someone may have taken and pulled the copy off it, and I know who it was, Steve Ritter. Mm. But that was not done on purpose. And I'll give them their 12 hours back, but that was not done to steal anything from anybody. Okay, but you see the problem that the issues that were raised, Jenny, are legitimate issues. I can see it. Because if they're coming to your house and you're sitting around, and I'm not saying it's true, I'm saying that's what they're reporting. If you're sitting around watching TV when you're on duty, they feel like you're stealing money from the, from the village. If you're going out and riding four-wheelers on a day you're supposed to be at work and then you clean time off too, that's a problem, man. Well, I can see that being a problem, but that wasn't done on purpose. Okay. I can tell you that. Just for maintenance, say on that same day. And out of respect for you, Jimmy, I, I'm giving you, I'm laying everything on the table. Like, I'm not, I'm not holding anything I, back from here. I, I already, here's the one that was turned in of yours. And I'm looking for, for me, Jim. You are past it. Or one. Never here. 425. And Vermaet was with you, and Vermaet and claimed six hours. Why would he claim six hours when he's supposed to work? On Tuesday, he works two, noon to ten. No idea. So that should, <clears throat> I don't even know why that was put there. That was noon, to, should have been noon to ten instead of four to ten. And it had been ten hours. What and, time did you guys get back from that trip? Oh, hell, I don't remember. Was it dark? No, no, no. Maybe he tried to come in later, I don't know. But he put down numbers too on that day that he wasn't at work. The right. Ritter had to come in because the two of you were both gone. And the, and the dispatch traffic had Ritter on there, not you guys. Yeah. And Ritter obviously, on here, 4 to 11. Yeah. And you're being honest with me that you know you guys were out there on the 25th. Well, yeah. You know, so right. that's the problem, Jimmy. And you right. know, I turn this stuff over to, to to Mayor Wells and the Village Council. They're probably going to have an issue. Well, you know what? This was not done on purpose. I probably should do my timesheet every day that I get done. And I didn't. That right there, the 25th, was not done on purpose. Uh, you know, I, and I can understand it looks terrible. But, Jimmy, you just told me earlier that you do it like that, that you make sure that you don't put that ending on there until you're actually done. I just started doing that. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Because of all this issue of them saying, time sheet this, time sheet that, time sheet this. Right. And, and Peggy is very... This is, Jimmy, I don't know if you've ever seen this before. This is... Couple years of people thinking that you're doing stuff that you shouldn't be doing. A couple years since 2014. That's how long that is. That's a lot. That's what that's what's going to go over to those guys, man. That's and obviously there are issues there. Now obviously there's some issues whether you did it on purpose or not. There are issues there that are very serious. Like. What issues are very serious? Like if I did that, if, if I left and I, I came back here and I claimed that 
I work that day, I get charged with theft in office probably. I don't get fired. I mean, I get fired like pretty quickly here. Right. All right. So I don't know what they're going to do there. I don't know their procedures. Frankly, I don't care um, because that's that's between you and them. My job was to find out what happened with with everything. Yeah, I did not do the twenty fifth of April or this was it this year? No, no seventeen. That's, that's, that's right. right. Seventeen. Yeah. Seventeen. On purpose, you know. Yeah, probably I was lackadaisical in doing the timesheets every day, but I know how she is, so we, we have tightened it up very much because I know how particular she is. Yeah, Jimmy, I, and, I, and whatever happens in this investigation, man, I hope you guys tighten it up. I but, really do. I mean, I, whether you're there, whether you decide to leave, or what happens. Well, I, I, I'm I hope, sure she'll, she's going to fire me. I hope to God you guys get shit straightened up, though. You know, and, and I will be the first one to look both of you in the eyes and say, yeah, we need to tighten some things up. I have no problem with that. have no problem with getting guidance on how to do that, okay? But to say I blatantly ripped off this Black Island Police Department is bull. I have put 34 years of my life out there. I gave them people more than anything. I lost a marriage over this police department. Okay? Mm -hmm. I've lost girlfriends over this police department because I spent more time there than I would with them. You know, just because someone comes to my house and they see me in blue jeans and a t-shirt that says police and a Glock 27 on my side doesn't mean that I ain't working. Doesn't mean that I don't have something in the mix going on. Mm -hmm. You know, Mayor Foster Mayor Carroll knew every time I would be working out of my house. But Jimmy, your computer, like you said, the computer at your house has the same things the computer does at uh, at work. In fact, Oleg, you're not running at your house. I hope no. you're running at, at you know at work. Why go home? Because it's more peaceful for one thing. The phone's not ringing three hundred thousand times. The chimes on the door is not ringing on and off. Bing, bong, you got to walk out through the other side of the office. It's more peaceful, and you can get more stuff done. Steve Ritter don't come in and stand at your desk and do this for 45 minutes. You know? I can understand that. And, and, and trying to get things done, and Andy don't come, wouldn't come in and do all this. And you're trying to get something done. It's like seven, being pulled 17 different ways. Yeah. Like you're, you, you're Stretch Armstrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so, impossible to do. I understand that. Hell, it's impossible to be in your position a lot of times. It's hard. Yeah. Uh, and, I get it. And for, I can tell you exactly, and you can just look at me and, and tell me it's none of my business. I don't care. That stuff coming up there is from Steve Ritter. Steve Ritter wants my job. I'll tell you what. I'll be completely 100% honest with you because I, I don't bullshit, and I'm not bullshitting you now. That did not come from Steve Ritter. Some of it had to have. None of it did. None of it come from Steve Ritter. Nothing in that book came from Steve Ritter. No. And let me tell you, let me just say this. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, conclude. I'm gonna end the whole thing on this, Jimmy. Whatever you do, whatever you decide, you know, I want you to understand and, and know that we respect you. You know, we've known you for a long time. I hope things work out for you. I really do. Um, you know, I'm sorry that I, you know, even got pulled into this thing because it's it's unpleasant. It's not pleasant for me to have to investigate you, okay? I took no joy in this, believe me. Um, but I wish you luck, man. Whatever you do, whatever you decide, I hope you, you know, succeed in it. And if it's this and you stay here, I hope you succeed. If you decide to take off, you know, I hope you find something good for you. If you get fired, I hope you find something good for you. All right? Well, I, I want you to understand, there's no, <clears throat> there's no animosity here. There's no hard feelings, no matter what. And and I hope you feel the same way. I there isn't. I understand what you guys had to go through. I understand what you guys are doing. But the mistakes that were made, and there was mistakes made, but none of them was done to rip off anybody, discredit anybody, get any extra free money, or what, pat anything, or anything like that. The auxiliary hours and for mating doing them, I should have overseen it. But you know, when you delegate something, I probably should have just make sure it was right. Or I should just did it myself. Yeah. But when you got so many things going on, 
you delegate to this gentleman. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. A and you you guys are good friends, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> but you believe in him. I do. Yeah. A and I believed in Vermeiden. My problem here, mine, I should have probably just made <clears throat> sure that it was done right. But I had no no doubt in him that he because he's done sure. Stuff like that before. I guess, just for future reference, Jimmy, I trust them, but I verify everything they do. Well, and I, that's what I should have done. You know, I mean, and that just keeps me, because since I've got some vicarious liability and all this stuff, you know, with him or with the other detective, you know, i, I got to make sure that I'm doing the things, they're doing the things right so that it doesn't come back on me, you know. Ultimately, you're the head of the police department. You're the, you're the top fish over there, you know. Was. But, I'm sure. But, you, you know what I'm saying? You, you are. I'll well, I am. You know, and so ultimately, who's it come down to? I know, I know you know, exactly. As unfortunate as it is, you know, it's, it's going to come down to you. Oh, I know. And it's going to come down when you guys give her a report. It's going to come down and she's going to let me go. But you know what I'm giving her. I lay it all on the table. There's no surprises, all right? And, and that's all, that's the respect that I want to show you is I'm not, I'm not pulling punches here. I'm not hiding anything. I'm showing you, I'm showing you my entire hand. And I'm, laying, been, I'm laying out for you so that you, yourself, if you, there's a decision to be made, you understand these are the cards that are being played, okay? Right, exactly. And I'm giving you that respect to say, here, here's my whole hand. This is it. And, and I've been 150 million percent honest with you, gentlemen. I appreciate and, it. You know, it. And I have nothing to hide. You know, just like this, this, whatever date that was, and my hours are down there. I didn't, I come in here with nothing to hide because I didn't even realize that. Mm -hmm. And I should have done it day by day, like I am now. I didn't even realize that, to be truthful with you. At the yeah. end of the week, you got so much stuff coming up the second week. I know, but you can't estimate, man. You can't go back to that, that kind of thing. You say you're estimating your hours, you know, with Vermaiden uh, estimating the hours and you estimating the hours and then the estimates for city or for uh, the auxiliaries and then you're giving that as an official document into Village Council who's making a public record. No, it's accurate. Yeah, now I see where she came up with this letter accuracy of mm -hmm. reports. Now I see right. what she come up with this public records request or documents or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And I agree. I should have been did a little bit more due diligence when Jeff was making out the reports. Yes, I should have. Yeah. Now Jimmy, how, how long have you been at Okay, like your total years of yeah. service? How, how 33, 34 30 years. A lot of time. Do you feel in any way that the village owes you anything? We, as, as in one. Uh, all the time of service that you've given to the village, of uh, the village of Buckeye Lake, do you feel that they owe you anything? Um, in this matter here, are we talking? Well, or I, anything? I think it's come to a point where, you know, you kind of get into this complacent, this is how it's been done, this is what we do. You know, you mentioned I take a lot of phone calls, I do a lot of work outside of your actual hours. Mm -hmm. I, I do too. I do the Facebook page, I do a lot of other things. I don't necessarily feel like, you know, the city owes me anything, but, you know, there may be times where you said, well, okay, I worked eight hours today, but I did two hours outside of work, you know, because you probably did, but you didn't actually log those hours in uniform at the desk or anything. Right. I mean, in instances like that, I mean, do you feel like it's a wash when things like that happen? No. No. Okay, and you don't feel like the village owes you anything for all the service you've done, and well, okay, you know, I I worked this much, and they had, you know, I, I gave them an hour over here. It's not a big deal, you know. I'm basically no. in a back. You don't feel like that, no. Okay. I, I, you know, I, I I like to get paid for what I work. Um, like I said, I didn't turn in some hours because I knew I'd work myself out of a job, and that's the way it's always been. I'm, I'm, Give you an example. Of the reason why. Right before Mary left in November, I asked. No, December. I asked if we could get a window tent meter for forty-eight dollars. No, you don't have the money. Seriously. Wow, uh, forty-eight bucks. Forty-eight dollars. Mm -hmm. So that's the way we've always been. In that village from day one I started, they don't give us nothing. We buy our own paper. We buy our own uniform. They give us a uniform allowance. But we buy our own boots and we buy our own guns and our belts and stuff that whatever the uniform allowance won't cover. 
You know, that reminds me of something, though, Jimmy, i got to ask you before you take off here. You threw away a bunch of property the other day. Yeah. No, it was boxes and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, and one of them was one of our uniform shirts. Yes, I yes. I didn't see that. Yeah. Why'd you throw away our shirt? It was. It had been in the back of the property room forever. So some of the stuff you threw away was that property or just boxes? Because we found some, some dried up weed and all that stuff too out there. You understand? You got to get court orders to throw that stuff out, right? Right. That was just dirt. Okay. That was just the dirt. Right. That I just want to make sure that you no. know because I know that yeah. procedurally there's you guys do a lot of stuff procedurally that makes no sense to us. But I want to make sure that you because that will get you in trouble. That'll get you yeah. in trouble. Like really fast. Yeah, that was just dirt. Okay, so you don't throw away anything from no. that it was not meant to be in there. Or no. that, 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 that just didn't have, just, you don't have instruction for anything though, right? Yeah. There is a, there's a bunch of stuff already boxed up that says, um, however it says, re, um, it's been destroyed. Probably. Yeah, destroyed. Uh -huh. um, <coughs> what we did, did you get rid of that stuff? No. Okay. No. How do you get rid of stuff? Mark Gardner. Okay. And that's what we were waiting for was Mark Gardner. <coughs> Perfect. Okay. But we had three totes, and we had all this stuff. Um, the only thing we threw away was empty boxes, because we would take all this stuff that was in boxes. We had three big totes, and we'd write on a yellow piece of paper <coughs> what it was. Gotcha. Put it all in there, and then after that tote was full, we put tote number one, put the, the legal people in it, and put the lid on it. Okay. We did, I think, two of them, two or three of them. The only thing we threw away was empty boxes, the Patasco shirts, and um, I think it was a was it a planner? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, of just dirt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That we'd already cut all the stuff off of that and, and weighed it, Got and you. it is actually still in there. Right. I just want to see you get in more trouble. And that's been from oh good. my god. Right. Like I said, Jimmy, I just want to see you get more trouble yeah. because of something like that because that. With just a big red flag. Oh, I have nothing to do with. That doesn't really have too much to do with what we're talking about. Right. No, when no, I saw no. it, I was like, oh, you know, I don't want you to. No, I know. I got to shut up for a second. Excuse me for just one second. Let me, let me go back to the, the AG real quick. Uh, that kind of starts curiosity's sake. It was uh, for Maiden went in first, then you, and then Ritter. Um, now, did you guys have any type of police identifiers or anything as the two people going in first? For Maiden, you know, police. So he just did a verbal warning. Yes, in. please. Uh, but you guys didn't have any uniform, any throwovers or anything, any type of identifier that said that you were police in case a resident oh, encountered you. Whether it's a badge or, you know, we have the, the vest that yeah. just say police. For maintenance, I didn't. You did not, okay. Yeah. Is there any reason why you didn't have Ritter go in first? Because he, he was in uniform, correct? He was working the road that night? He had the rifle. Okay. And he had a flashlight. Okay. It's is why. just a tactics thing. I mean, yeah. if, you know, it it has been a defense used in court cases throughout the country if an ununiformed officer with no police identifiers enters first and gets shot and killed, that person has made that defense that it's been, I thought it was an intruder. Right. Um, so, you know, just a tactics type thing, just yeah. moving forward. And you had a uniformed officer with you, mm -hmm. and, you know, just, just trying to clarify, you know, well, why not just have him go first? Because at least you have your first line of, yeah, he's an officer, he's in uniform, you should know when you see him. Um, so, I was just trying to clarify. Just, right, just and you make, a good, you make a good point there. Yeah. I mean, it would just went down so damn fast that it was... Yeah, it, it, it seems like it, and, and I don't fault you, and I, I don't, you know, Sergeant Smith doesn't either. I mean, if in the heat of the moment you feel like you had a duty to respond, and you guys were that close, and you were able to, Great. Now, is it, did you necessarily go about it the right way? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe there's a better way. Maybe you could have just held the trailer, called the county, whatever, um, for your safety. The last thing we want in this county is another officer killed. We oh, do not I know you're that. right. You know, I mean, you guys didn't have vests, you didn't have identifiers, you weren't fully, completely equipped. Because what if, you know, what if you did end up in a shoot shootout and Ritter's gun jams? He doesn't have his sidearm on him. You know, same with any of you. It's just, you know, it's bad tactics. There's other ways to go about it, but there's no right way. I mean, no one says this is exactly how, how you have to no do it. No written rule. Time. There's not. There's not. And, and like I said, we don't fault you for that. Uh, exigent circumstances being what they are, you're going off what you know, seems like a pretty legit thing. I mean, hey, i got to go in there and save some lives. You know, that's what we're built to do. It's just how we are. So I, I get that. I understand that. You know, so. Um, 
But if anything, learning lesson, if anything. So. My lord. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't pounded coffee in water. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, <man. laughs> Yeah, I, I can. You know, and we're talking about vests. We've asked for vests so for so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 just one of those things. I mean, there's still departments in the state that, you know, if you get one donated, you get one donated. If you get a hand me down, you get a hand me down. If you don't get one, well, you want to go into work, and, you know, without one, may or may not. So, you know, I, mean, I understand that. It's definitely an issue throughout the state, throughout the country. It's definitely an issue. Hey, Jimmy. Yep. I got a thing in here. I just want to read this. I spoke with Randy from the street park today. Randy said Terry Small got in trouble. That Terry was caught by Jimmy carrying a battery, and Terry told Randy knew, or tell, uh, told Terry to tell him that Randy knew. Jimmy then confronted Randy, and Randy said he didn't know anything about it, but Jimmy did nothing about it. You remember that? Oh, I caught uh, Terry was walking across the parking lot. Yeah. And I asked him about the battery, mm -hmm. and he said Randy. Um, Randy get, said he could have it, okay. and it was a battery, an old battery that went to a, a, the siren. And then when I asked Randy, Randy said that no, he did not tell Small to have it. Okay. Okay. Randy didn't want any confrontation between just didn't want Terry Small not to come back, okay. and so did Mark Demick was underneath. He was underneath Mark Demick at that time. Okay. So that's why nothing was done because they didn't want any. Conflict, just tell Terry he's not allowed back at the street department. Right. But if you see this book, Jimmy, like I said, this is a book basically about Jimmy. That's fine. All right. I mean, Jimmy called, uh, asked me to come in at 11, said he had a funeral meeting to go to. He took a cruise at a funeral. 320 calls, said he was going home for the day at 320, so he went home for the day. It's literally day by day for years of you going home. Are you not coming in, or you saying you were somewhere that they said that you weren't at? And I'm just saying this is what this guy's saying, over and over and over and over again. That is Andy Davis. That's right. It's Andy Davis. But remember, this is Andy Davis. But it's also former employees that I've talked to saying the oh. same things. It's also current employees. I'm saying, you know, they're saying the same things. Just honestly, Jimmy, do you think that you're doing a great job over there? From Let's say 2015 on. Do you think that you're doing the job that you should be doing? Yes, I do. Okay. Why do you think so? Because I get things done, and just because that I'm not in uniform every day of the week mm -hmm. doesn't mean that I'm not doing something for that police department. I look for grants for cars. I look for grants for equipment. I look. I mean, if you look for grants for um, generators for the police department in case the electric goes out. When the electric goes out, we're done. Mm -hmm. Our department's done. Next door has a generator. You just can't just tie it into it? They wouldn't tie us into it. So I look for grants and stuff like that. Today, I read, was, I've read been reading the new DUI laws and getting up on the new unclassified misdemeanors on your DUSs and stuff like that. Getting ready to print that stuff out. Well, Jimmy, I, and I, you know what? I don't, didn't really want to to go here with this, but I'm going to anyway because, again, it's out of respect for you. But, you know, we had a... Quite a few officers, too, said they went to your house because you were threatening suicide. What? Three officers told us that. Who? The three that were there. Um, three? They, they said that you, you, know, you, wanted to, you wanted to kill yourself because of the insurance checks. You recall that? You recall that? And the reason I'm telling you this, Jimmy, I don't even care if you answer. This, this job will stress you the hell out. This job will get to you. This job will take you, you know, they'll, they'll just take you to the point where you're like, oh. snap. I just, I, yeah. Jimmy, I'm just telling you because, again, it's out of respect for you. Yeah. Now, if the job's getting you this bad, maybe you got to no. think about it for a while and say, is this what I want to do? No. You know what? The insurance check, and it wasn't an insurance, it was about my insurance on my house that flooded my, uh, my okay. washroom. And then I said, you know what? I said, I'm just freaking sick and tired of life. Yeah. And everybody at that point overreacted. But you do remember that then. Yeah, but it, but I didn't actually say, I'm going to kill myself and, my, you know. Right. No, I said, I am fucking, my back words were, I'm fucking sick and tired of life because every time I turn around, I get fucked. Well, apparently you scared enough people that they were It scared sure. Jeff for maintenance. We were scared. It did. It scared the shit out of him. Yeah, I know it did. So. Um, and, and he knows, he knows there's three reasons, well, let me use this hand, three reasons 
that I would never hurt myself. First of all, it was my son. I love that boy more than anything. Then there's two little girls on. Never. That pisses me off. That pisses me off. Well, it's not meant to piss you off, Jimmy. It's meant to show you that life is valuable, man. Mm -hmm. And you're spending most of your life just being pissed off at the world or doing something that's affecting your health. Maybe you gotta look at it and just say, man, I don't wanna do all this crap. You know what no. I mean? Maybe at some point you just say, I gotta make my life easier. And I'm not saying to quit. I'm saying find a way to make your life easier. You know, it's you know funny. These guys wanna write all this stuff down. Maybe I should have been keeping a book on Andy Davis. Maybe I should have been keeping a, a job. A book no, no, on you should have been really? doing. What you should have been doing is being the chief of police and saying, yep. you know what, you're not doing your job right. You know, here's your write-up for this, here's your tangent, but to, to do that, you've got to be a supervisor. To do that, you've got to be an asshole sometimes, and to do that, you've got to be on top of shit. Yeah. And, I, Jimmy, I, I love you to death, man. I respect you, but you didn't do that. No. I think we can all agree on that, right? You didn't do that. So, you know, that, that's an issue. That's something that, regardless of what you do from here on out, you got to look at this time and say, yeah, you're right. I could have done things a lot differently. I could have done things a lot better. You know, but at the end of the day, I'll be the first one to tell you I could have done things different, could have done things a lot better. You're damn, you're damn right. But, you know, when you're that close of an apartment, you know, and I can tell you, let me tell you this, where this stands from. And you can believe me or you can't believe me. The day Ron Small retired, Ron Small's Andy's father-in-law, Okay. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Andy married Ron's daughter, Rhonda. All right? When Ron was retiring, Ron wanted to retire. And then he wanted to come back three days a week. And then I work the rest of the week. I work with him them three days, but I finish it out. He wanted to be the chief of police. He wanted to keep his sick time. And he wanted to keep his vacations five weeks a year. Mayor Baker said... No. Um, I don't know what happened between them, but one day I come in the office and Ron said, if I would retire today, who would you put in your place? I said, well, I said, I'd probably put in Andy. He said, good, because if you had sent <coughs> for Maiden, I wasn't retiring. I retiring as of Friday. All right. So you promoted Andy to sergeant because of that? No. Okay. He said, Andy's your new sergeant. I've already worked it out with Mayor Baker. You're going to start him out at this amount of money. Okay. I didn't know I was put him on a sergeant or anything else. I thought maybe he'd just come on full time as a, as a uh, patrolman, but okay. Ron already worked everything out. Mm -hmm. So that was in 2013. 2014, I reached the point where I could retire with Ohio Police and Fire, okay? I asked the mayor, which was a new mayor, Clay Carroll. I'm to the point where I can retire. It's not going to do me a real a lot of good to work. Can I retire and can I come back? I said, this is what I'll do. I'll give you my sick time and I'll give you my vacation and I'll start at zero. I said, then you won't have to find someone. You already know I can do the job. He said, let me kick it around. Two days later, he called me and said, yes, you can. So, all right, went to the retirement board and I retired. Knowing Ron was going to be madder than hell, Ron's a very vindictive man. Ron's a very greedy man. And nothing in this world matters anything other than money to that man. Okay? So... I said, let me be the one to tell him. I think I can tell him in an easy way that will not piss him off. Boy, was I wrong. He called me every name in the book in the Dollar General parking lot. He said this was his favorite words, was bullfuck. He left. He called one of our, our council members, just tore them a new ass that he was friends with, Barry. Heron. Um, and then two weeks later, he calls the Mayor Carroll and tells Mayor Carroll that 
I'm worthless, and I do nothing. And, and I've never done anything. Threw me under the bus. So, this little book that we have here is from his son-in-law because Andy is the same damn way. There ain't nothing in this world that means more to Andy Davis than money. You know? So, this is driven from that. Guys, you can say, all oh, this is a bunch of horse shit. You can, oh, he's full of shit. Tell that fat ass to go back to Buckeye Lake. That's the 110% truth, Gary. And I would take a polygraph exam 1,400 times over. And it would come out the same. That I'm telling you the truth. I've told you the truth all day today. And I appreciate that, Jimmy. I have nothing to hide. You know, yeah, you bring things up, should have been tightened up. You're right. I appreciate that. I hope you tell Mayor Wells that I don't have any training as being a big supervisor because every time we ask to go to training, we don't get it. It gets denied. They denied forty-eight dollar free window ten. You think they're going to give me three hundred twenty dollars to go to? No, I understand that. We we got a deputy chief who'll do the same thing. You know, you know trying to get things and little tiny things, and he just he likes to poo poo on everything like that. But we I so we, we get it to an extent, believe me. But you know, just like the the, the day that he says I was I was working, I, I put down I was working, but I was for I didn't do that on purpose. That is one hundred thousand percent typo. You know. Okay, Jimmy. I mean, I'm not angry at you guys. Well, I hope not. Yeah. Well, I hope not. not. I well, I'd be angry at you guys. There's nothing. Right. You guys got drug in the middle and only was supposed to have been an accidental shooting. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know how all this came about. I got to go confirm something real quick with these guys and uh, outside, make sure that they we're good, we're we're good to go. Yeah. yeah, I think that's why I'm going to check one because yeah. I got one more thing. All right. Jimmy, we're going to let you go in a minute, man. Hold on a second. Deputy Sheriff's here to take me to jail, isn't he? I don't think so. No. No. Okay. Well, sure not. Uh, I wasn't made aware if that's the case, so... I have right got now, nothing to go to no. jail for. No. No. And like we said, this is all under Garrity, so this is a completely different different circumstance. You know. Uh, I appreciate that you guys show me some of these things. I really do. Well, like, like Gary said, we just want to be upfront and honest because we're not trying to be shady, we're not trying to be conniving, we're not trying and to be And I don't think you guys have been. We're just trying to put everything out there and just be open and we're trying to be the unbiased party. That, I mean, we're on the west side of the county, we're the stepchild as it is, you know, so it's a little bit easier for them to ask somebody who is still within the county, just a different agency. Yeah, that's not fair. Right. So. <laughs> that's the same things I had on here, you're good, man. No, there's no tricks, Jimmy. We don't have a, we don't have a deputy waiting for you. My <laughs> God, I see that. I was like, man, am I going to jail? No, 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 no. Yeah, you're not going no. to jail. All right, this is, again, this is internal investigation. Uh, nothing that we talked about separate. can be used. And, and, you know, Gary, I, I appreciate you more than you think because you've showed me a few things that I should tighten up and I need to tighten up. Yeah. And you showed me that I put a little bit more faith in people that maybe I shouldn't have just because they're friends and we go out and eat dinner and everything. Yeah. Doesn't mean they're going to do exactly what they're supposed to do. Absolutely not. But you can't. You got to separate business yeah. from friendship. It just has to You know that's hard because when you all work together, right? Oh, yeah. You know, we all work together. We're all very tight, but at the same time, I get you know I get my butt kicked in sometimes too when I do something stupid. And which I just should. I don't want to lose my job. I have thirty-four years in. I have a lot left in me to go. I do know there's needs to be things to be tightened up, and if I get the chance, they'll be tired of it. Nuns. I got you. I know where you're going with that. But, you know, I've been 100% honest with you guys because I came in here like Jeff not wanting to take the CVSA. That was bullheadedness. That wasn't mm -hmm. because I don't believe in them. My, my attorney says he doesn't believe in them either. Sure. It's, it's unproven science. It's unproven. I don't know. There, there are things down there that are... That are Really good aspects, I think, too. There's yeah. a lot of the pre-interview stuff that are really, really now, good. Now, did I take a CVSA? I'm not going to give you one. Okay. I'm not going to give you one because I believe you. I mean, I, mean, I do. I, I believe what thank you're you. saying. I'm not, I'm I not doubting. I'm not, so I don't, I don't have to give you one. You know, I didn't come out here and stay out there and oh, sure. God, I'm nervous. <laughs> because 
Gary, I have nothing to hide. Yeah. And Not a thing to hide from you. And again, Jimmy, like I said, man, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a respect thing for me. I respect the, the, the time you put in, the job you've done, and everything else like that. So, you know, I just wanted to give you all the information so you, you, you're aware of what we've got going on. And I was meticulous. That's why it's taken a long time to get to you because I wanted to talk to everybody because I didn't want you to come in here and me only have half the half the knowledge. Okay. Right. I wanted to make sure I, I give you the fairest shit possible. So that's the way you have to do it. I hope we can. I hope we can leave as friends here, and no matter what happens, we're going to leave as friends. Understand that uh, you know I, I want to do this as fair as possible. Okay. I mean, you did what you was asked to do. Right. And you can't do a half-assed job. No, I can't, because then I'll get my, my ass kicked, too, okay? But you, you did enlighten me on things that needs to be tightened up. Yeah. Uh, you enlighten me on, you're right about that identifier, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just when something goes down that fast, you don't think of that. Yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking someone like was dying, mm -hmm. you know? But, Jimmy, like I said, no tricks pulled there, man. None at all. So, you know, we're, I think we're done. You ready to go? Then, you know, you're free to go. Am I allowed to have a copy of this when everything's done? Yeah, you get a copy of everything. Yeah, you get a copy. Of, uh, I don't know about the book. You'll get a copy of uh, at least your interview. I'll give everything to the mayor, yeah. and I don't, I'm not sure exactly because we, you know, we don't. We typically do in-house in stuff. Yeah. You know, so um, I don't know if there's a public records request that has to be made for yeah. Buckeye Lake. I'm not really sure how it's going to work. Exactly. You know, because it's kind of funny. I, I treated Andy Davis, and Andy would sit for hours and talk about business, or he would. Meet his real estate people. Okay. You shouldn't let that shit happen. Exactly. You shouldn't let that You're happen. Exactly. You know, You're exactly right. That's where it backs up to being a supervisor you know, and being the head of the department. You have to be responsible, so you've got to cut that. The bad thing is, is I done exactly what past chief has done, and the, and the reason is cam the straw that broke the camel's back was this. I got to sit to a twenty-eight. Okay. Ron's at the office. Ron never shows up. Ron's on the phone getting a load for his semi from Texas back to Ohio. I about get my ass kicked. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for Tommy Lucas coming in, I had tased the guy. No effect. No effect. We were going toe to toe. Mm -hmm. And I tried to tase him again. My taser broke. If it wasn't for Tommy Lucas coming in and laying down on the guy. The guy was on a set of steps. I knocked him back, back was on a set of steps. And Tommy come around the corner and just laid down on the guy, and just laid there. Mm -hmm. Guy knocked it, knocked the breath out of him. We flipped him over and cuffed him. Ron never left that office because he was getting him a load. Not a way to do business. So I went to the mayor and said, "This is it." Mm -hmm. I, you know what? I followed in that man's footsteps. And that sucks. I agree. Unfortunately. Yep. And I see that you can't be friends with Jay here and have Jay do some your delegation work and not check him. Right. Yeah, everything's got to be checked. They rechecked and so, sometimes checked three times. But I probably will not get the chance to do that because I guarantee you she's going to let me go. I don't know. I hope not. That's on her. Yeah, that's on her. Yep. It. I yeah, hope we, not. We are the gatherer of the information, Jimmy. Yeah. That's it, man. Oh, I know. I can't, you know, I can't even suggest to her anything. I can't suggest to you anything. All I can say is we know that there were some deficiencies that well, need to be tightened up, no matter what. She told Jeff from Mayton that you guys recommended immediate termination for him. We didn't recommend anything. We didn't do any recommendations. We said, for here, she asked us what we would have done here for that stuff. And I said, that would have been insubordination, and that's termination here. If you're insubordinate here, you're terminated, especially during a internal investigation. Mm -hmm. You just can't do it. It says that right in the Gary. Right. It, it, even, you know, the Gary writes to your rep. Same thing. I mean, you can't, you cannot do that. So um, anything that she does, that's completely on her. Right. Whatever her that's, powers are, that's between her, village your, council, village, yeah, your, your guys, and all that. Yeah, that's and all absolutely that. zero to do with me. You know, and anytime she's asked me a question on what should I do about this, I told her contact the solicitor. Mm -hmm. Right. Because that's the only advice I can really give her. Contact the solicitor. Do it that way, and, and that's you know, then you're covered. Yeah, we we don't like on that game. That's, yeah, no, that's for the attorney. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, that's a game that you know if they want to play that game. That's for them to play, not for us. 
You know, we're, we're the impartial gatherers of the, of the information, and that's it. Now, I'll do a report, I'll do a statement up, and that'll be the information that I was told. And that's it. You know, it's not an opinion. It's not, you know. Right. My opinion to you, you know, is I try to give you some advice. I mean, it's not really my opinion. I, I, guess, I guess it is. But that's to you, you know, from a police officer to a police officer, a supervisor to a supervisor, you know, that things could definitely be tightened up. And I see that now. I, I see that 100%. Right. I see that. And, and I agree with you. And, I, and I'll probably start tightening them up tomorrow. You know? <clears throat> just do what you got to do. Jump through the hoops and see where you fall. I mean, you know, yeah. I just, I want you to leave here feeling like you had all the information. And you do. You have all the information. I have everything. All right. All right. Jimmy. Buddy, I have no thought feelings. I hope not. I love both of you. I hope We're all brothers in blue. I hope we can. Same goals. You know, I hope we can have a beer someday and sit back and talk about, you know, the good old days. We can do that. <laughs> How long have you been here? I've been here for 15 years. How long have you been here? Uh, seven. Seven? Yeah. You like it? Yeah. It treat me well. You pay me a little bit more. Hello? No, I'm in a meeting. What's up? I know BJ just tried to call me, but... Well, I figured it's Smith on Smith here.